What up boys and welcome back to yet another Dragonflight video. So in this video we're going to talk about some of the hot fixes that was done today and also some of the upcoming changes on 1005 that's going to directly impact gold making. So that's what's on the agenda for this video. Now before we dive into it, big thank you to everyone that has subscribed lately. We're sneaking up on 100,000 YouTube subscribers and as promised, that's when I'm going to do millions of golden giveaways to you guys, the subscribers only. So make sure you subscribe down below to the YouTube channel. And a special thank you to every single one of you guys that has picked up a copy of the 0 to 10 million gold guide. Support has been massive. The feedback as well. I'm so glad that you guys are liking the Dragonflight updates. And if you use the discount code Dragonflight, you will get the book for 50% off. And just know that this comes with a lifetime of free updates. So whenever the next patch comes out or even the next expansion, you guys, as long as you got the book, will receive all the future updates for free for life. So make sure to check it out with the link down below in the description. But today, first of all, we're looking at the hot fixes, what's already been implemented. And there's a couple of interesting things. Like, first of all, they did finally a change to Artisan's Consortium. Now, if you guys don't know about the factions, basically it allows you to purchase knowledge points and patterns and plants and so on. And uh, you get quests with these guys weekly. Now, what people did is that people, they did two quests, let's say with Herbalism and Mining. They dropped those professions, picked up new professions, leveled them to 25 so they could do the quests again. And then they dropped those professions picked up two new professions, leveled it to 25, and then did the two daily quests. And so that way, they could get uh, 250 reputation from having each the professions in the game. Now, though, you can only do two a week for a total of 500 rep a week. So that's pretty big, and it, honestly, like, it should have been fixed uh, ages ago. Uh, further on, I want to talk about uh, the enchanting formulas. Uh, basically, with the uh, elemental invasions that's happening in the Dragon Isles, you are able to kill the rare elites and you have a chance at getting these illusions. Illusion, Primal Frost, Air, Fire and Earth. Now, these used to be bind on pickup, so you would have to go there on your enchanter, get them, and then you could uh, craft them and sell them on the auction house. And they are fairly good. Like, I got the Fire one. On my uh, enchanter, I, I tried to get the other ones, but I haven't been able to. And with slacking, and I mean like really slacking, like I barely posted this. I've still sold six of them for a total of 380,000 gold. And I have four more crafted on me. So these have been making a lot of gold. So if you guys haven't received them yet, it might even be worth purchasing the formula so you can craft these. Let alone just at least farm them. Because people will pay a premium for the formula as well, because there's a total of four of them, which means that you can craft all four of them for the first craft bonus, giving you a total of four knowledge points, right? There's currently, as far as I was uh, able to see right now in my realm, and none up on the auction house currently. Maybe there's no invasion active, I actually haven't checked that. But an interesting thing is, like the, the the illusions, I haven't been able to see the Earth one on any of the realms that I play on. I've only seen Frost, Fire, and Air. So if anyone of you guys have the uh, illusion Primal Earth, please let me know. But regardless, these are really good. The profit margins are big on these. As you can see, right now it costs 11k to craft. That's 44,000 gold profit on my realm. So yeah, they're massive. Jump on those. Even if you don't have enchanting, at least go and get them. Sell the formulas. Um... Further on, we have as well something that's really interesting is jewel crafting. Fixed an issue where the design elemental lariat was not properly dropping off of all the boss storm creature creatures. It should now properly drop off them. And then a developer's note, players only have a chance to get this recipe on the first kill each day. Matching the behavior of each... Like, I know people in my community that have been farming this, like, for 24 hours straight. <laughs> and to get this confirmation that it can only drop off the first kilo in each day is going to be such a relief for people. And they should also, uh, now, as they can drop off all boss creatures, uh, be hopefully easier to get. If you guys don't know what this is, it's pretty much the best necklace in the game. 
people were buying the Lariat uh, for gold cap. Look, it's 9 million gold in my realm. Has a market value of 9 million gold. Like the raid to world first raiders, they paid gold cap and then offered to pay for realm transfer so people could transfer to the realm with this design. Uh, people pay hundreds of thousands of gold in uh, order to get people to craft this for them. So this is absolutely insane. It can be like, what is it? Item level 405 or 408 or something like that. Um, so yeah, it is absolutely insane, this Solaria. So at least now you guys uh, or we get a better indication on uh, how we can obtain it. So that's pretty sweet. Further on, Blizzard has some changes to uh, to mining. There's more changes coming on the, uh, the 10 of 5 next patch, which I'm going to show. But what's really interesting to me is skinning. Because I messed up on skinning, big time. So the thing is, when I played on the, the PTR, uh, I instantly looked over the, the specialization points on skinning. And to me, the big obvious factor for me on skinning was to go into uh, the elusive baits. Now, what the elusive baits pretty much do is that you place a bait on the ground. Once you have it maxed out, you have a, a chance of a big chance, the highest chance of summoning an elite mob that you kill and skin. And obviously, elite mobs better loot. So my initially my initial idea was to have a group, a two times four farm. With eight people, every all eight of us specced into elusive bait, so we could summon eight elites. And I tested it on the the uh, alpha, and you were able in two thousand four to reset the cooldown on your bait in like two minutes on a proper spot. So that means every two minutes, we would be able to summon eight elite mobs, skin them, get good loot like in Shadowlands. Elites had a way higher chance of dropping the good mats like the the rare mats. And there, there was nothing that could compete with it. Sadly, when the live realms came out, we got eight people with the maxed out elusive bait. And they were so bad. Like, I'm, I'm so bad. Like, this has changed now though, hopefully for the better. So, they have significantly increased the bonus cooldown reduction so basically, when you have it maxed out, the cooldown reduction is now 20 minutes. It was 13 minutes. So you can do them uh, almost constantly on a proper uh, 2 times 4 skinning spot. But this is the best one. Increase the reward for skinning normal, rare, and elite elusive enemies. So you actually get better loot because that was the issue. The issue wasn't summoning the elites or anything like that. The issue was the loot that the elites gave. Sometimes they would give the same loot as just... A random regular mob that you would kill. In fact, most of the time they would, right? So and now also the normal enemies are now only skinnable by a single skinner. It doesn't really matter because if you all have it maxed out, uh, I think I summoned like uh, 20 baits and uh, like 18 of them were elite. So this shouldn't be an issue because the elite mobs can still be skinned by everyone in the group. So that is a great change and I can't wait to, um, to put it to the test to see exactly how good this is going to be now, now that it's been fixed. And then, looking at the, the 10.05 PTR notes, there's also some interesting uh, things coming in the next patch. They did some uh, revamp to the crafting orders. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to link this uh, down below, by the way, in the description. But this one here is uh, kind of interesting. Overload Elemental Deposit and Overload Elemental Herb has been slightly redesigned. The overload cooldown is no longer modified by gathering, mining, and herbing nodes. So basically right now, once you unlock, you don't even have to place any points on it, but you need to unlock uh, the overload uh, specialization. And you will then get the two abilities to overload herbs and ore. And that cooldown, similar to the skinning baits, is reduced whenever you, uh, you mine and herb. But you don't have to put any points into it in order to do so. But now Overload is now taught to all miners and herbalists after collecting the first elemental themed node. And mastering the elements now, like pretty much now you have to spend points into it, mastering the elements in order to get the same Overload cooldown reduction uh, functionality. Which, uh, they do a dev note on it and it kind of makes sense that before you spend a lot of points into it, they want to give it to everyone so you know how it all works. Like... I can't begin to express how many people that I know that's doing herbalism and mining, 
And they're not even aware of the overload herb and mine, right? The abilities. So it is a it's a good change, in my opinion. But that's pretty much all I had for uh, today. So if you guys got any questions whatsoever, leave them down below in the comment section. Also, make sure to subscribe to my YouTube channel, and that way you'll be notified whenever I upload a new video. But that's it for today's video. So thank you all so much for watching, and I'll see you all in the next one. But until then, bye-bye.